Okay, today I'm going to be reviewing the Sony HDR CX100. And the first thing, you need to know how much it costs because that's obviously the most important aspect of it. And I checked recently on Sony's website, it was $350. I'm not sure if that's exactly the best price there is out there, but just to, when I got it back at Christmas, it was $500. So it's went down a decent amount. Alright, I'm going to be going over some of the features and specs of this camera. It does shoot in full HD, 1920x1080p, so that's very nice. If you want to, you can lower it to 720p, and then if you want to go even lower than that, you can even go to standard definition high quality or standard definition low quality. Uh, this camera has 10 times optical zoom, 120 digital zoom. So the optical is very nice because it's actual zoom. Uh, digital isn't real zoom. You can give yourself more digital zoom with video editing software if you really need to. Another really handy feature this camera has is slow motion recording. It's a specific mode to you go on the camera and it lets you record a three second clip and it records at 240 frames per second. So that gives you a really smooth slow motion. That's a very handy feature I like. This camera, it comes in three colors, silver, black, and red. I have the black one. Uh, it has eight gigabytes of flash memory, which I like flash because it's really easy to put it on the computer. And eight gigabytes gets you about an hour of recording time on this camera. That's pretty good because you can just record what you want, dump it off the computer. And if you need to get even more, you can uh, get Sony's like uh, ProSig Duo I think ProSig Duo for more um, recording time so I've heard people complain about navigating through the menu menus is hard so I don't know what's hard about that you have your settings over here for manual focus which is fairly neat you just touch where you want it to focus and it will automatically do that for you The um, your light exposure focus you can adjust it through there digitally you have your scene selections for different settings you have twilight candle sunrise fireworks landscape portrait spotlight beach snow so those are pretty neat um, fader and this is where you can change your recording mode I have it on ABC HD um, the fullest um, I'll show you some of the ports on the side you have um, I don't know if you can see very well how well the lighting is right here see you have uh, your spot for more memory your pro duo stick you have your um, this is where you connect it to the computer my bad the HDMI and then that's the mini USB then you have some other functions on here um, easy burn DVD playback and that stuff now this camera does record in AVC HD now this can that requires a lot of computer power to uh, edit. I have a uh, Inspron. It's not that great, but it's 2.2 2.2 dual core, I think, and three gigs of RAM. A pretty decent graphics card, and it's still really choppy for me. So, if you're considering this about this camera, if you're going to consider buying this camera, I would suggest having a powerful computer. This camera does take still photos, uh, four megapixels. Now, I've heard people complain about like. I wasn't very impressed with the uh, still images. I think they're pretty good, and I'll show you some now. And I don't really think that should even really be that important of a factor when choosing a camcorder. Uh, this camera camcorder does not have any external mic jacks, so if that's something you like to use, you might want to consider that by when when buying this. And this camcorder does not have the night shot feature seen in other cameras. Um. I don't really think that's that big of a deal because first of all you're getting this camera for a really good deal and plus the night shot only went like five feet anyways so I don't think that's a big issue alright I'm gonna have the CX I have the CX100 in my hand right now and I'm just gonna show you around my messy room just some quick text test footage and I'll probably have a link to
to my other test footage on my actual channel. But I'll show you how it focuses the light, which is pretty neat. And this is a zoomed in. Right now I'm at um, the first optical, and now I start getting to the digital, which isn't really true zoom. It's just kind of like sitting closer to a TV. And I thought that's very neat how well it focuses to the light. Um, maybe I can show you the low light. Maybe over here is where the low light would be. Um, people can complain about the low light a lot. If you are inside and you don't have very much light at all, it will be grainy, but I don't see why you want to record in really low light anyways. Here's my closet, which will show you low light. Over here, it will be pretty grainy, but you can't really expect to get a whole lot of quality with no light regardless, unless you have a three-chip camera. Also, there's something I want to clarify. I've seen reviews where people have said this doesn't work for their Mac, which I'm not sure exactly why, but if you have iMovie, it works perfectly fine there because my friend has a Mac, and I should import it in there, no problem. And he also has Premiere Pro CS4, and import it into there, and it worked perfectly fine. So if you do have a Mac, do not let those rumors um, mislead you. All right, that's all for my review of this camera. If there's something I didn't specify you want to know about this camera in here, just ask me a question and I'll let you know. I choose